Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to more speed reviews. I have a few things I want to say before we get into this video, but as always, timestamps and links are in the description box below if you would kind of like to feel out what's in today's video, check out what we're going to be chatting about. But really quickly before we go further in today's video, I do want you to know, I apologize in advance if I sound a little off. I have a I have a cold one of those good old summer colds. Don't those just feel so wrong? It is 95 degrees out right now, but every morning I have been waking up freezing. It's so wrong. So my apologies in advance if I do sound a bit congested. Uh, still, I want to do some speed reviews. I've decided to split them up into my western and eastern speed reviews, so today's video will be our Western products, just in case any of you also happen to shop at Ulta. And I'm sure most of you do know what speed reviews are, just in case you don't. We're going to be talking about products more quickly today. I'm going to be giving kind of updates on most products. I think you have seen most of these, maybe not all of them. I'm not that consistent about hauling everything that I buy, but I do try to review what I feel ready to talk about. So that's the game plan for today. I think I do want to go ahead and start this video out with the most expensive item. And it is none other than this New Face Mini Plus that I did buy in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Just like I said back in my 21 Days of Beauty videos, I didn't really need to buy this from the perspective of a consumer. I have microcurrent devices, but from the perspective of a reviewer, I talked myself into it. I feel like I feel like it makes for more helpful reviews when the person talking can compare and contrast a device. And you know, we're talking about expensive devices here. So I decided to go for it. What is very nice about New Faces Mini is that it's a microcurrent device that retails for, I think, $245. And because it's at Ulta and was in the 21 Days of Beauty, I actually redeemed my points for this. I made a points haul, 2,000 points, and it got me this. And I actually had to add something to my card. I think I ended up adding uh, Q-tips something small so that I could hit that points level so that I could get the most from my points. You all know how Ulta's point system works, right? I feel like the best way to talk about this is through an example, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a demo. Now let me quickly tell you, one of the main selling points for me with this New Face Mini Plus was this right here. They claim that you have, in essence, more control over this device compared to previous New Face devices, which made it sound a lot more like the Zip to me in terms of what it can do. But a very quick problem I ran into is that New Face doesn't give you a lot more information than this. They do very much want you to download an app. I don't like apps. They are not my favorite thing to use when doing my skincare routine. But thankfully, I have it figured out at the time of recording this, so I'm going to go ahead and put up on the other side of the screen here the app itself. I do recommend you download it so you get this control. And don't worry, you don't have to keep using it. What you are going to want to do is first you name your device. I named mine after its aesthetic spheres, although it's been quite angsty since. Then what you do is you click the device, you click on the gear in the top corner, and that is where you have more access to the features. From there, you can choose if you want it to be hum enabled, which basically means it makes a humming sound, it vibrates, it's a lot more like the Foreo Bear when you have that on, which I do appreciate. And then you go into this default treatment setting right here, click where it says standard treatment, and there we have the ability to set those three modes. I'm telling you, this was so hard to figure out. If I did not live with a tech savvy person, I don't think I would have figured it out. But now that I do know this, I now have the ability to control this without the app. Thank goodness. You just power on your device. You have the ability to set it to low, medium, or high. You apply your gel. I dislike New Faces gel, but you do get it with this. And I admit you can use the app to initially figure out how to glide this across your face. I personally feel that every person is capable of very quickly coming to an understanding of how to use this. It's, it's up and out. It's, it's just up and out. 
Even on this max setting, it really shouldn't hurt. There should be no stinging. You should barely feel it. You should feel a sensation, but not much beyond that. I am someone who has a very low pain tolerance and this feels like nothing to me. That speaks for itself. So at this point, I would say the pros are that you don't have to keep using the app, that you do have control over this device, and most important of all, I do believe in microcurrent. I do believe that it stimulates ATP production. I don't believe every person needs it. In fact, check with your doctor before you purchase a microcurrent device. And, uh, you know, make sure you're not falling into that TikTok trap of 20 year olds needing anti-aging devices. If you haven't started aging, you're not gonna see the results from any anti-aging device. That feels like some real strange hyper capitalism to me. But anyway, those are some pros with it. What I don't like, again, I don't like their gel, but hey, you don't have to keep buying it. I personally think you can go with aloe. If you're worried about it, start with a, a mineral water spray first. But for the record, I do remember when New Face used to say, if you have sensitive skin, you can use aloe gel. They don't say that anymore. So in the end, I like it. I do like it. If I didn't figure out how to control it and if I wasn't able to use this without the app, I would not be a fan. Then again, of course, you know me. It's gonna be real hard for me to ever sit here and tell you, you should pay $245 for this. No, we saw it in the 21 Days of Beauty once before, which tends to mean it should be in the sale again. Might be a while as a heads up, but at least we know New Face is willing to run promos. So that's how I feel about it. I do like it. I, I, I think it works great, but uh, you know, why pay more if you don't have to? I have a few skincare products for this video. I think I'll probably move through this pretty quickly. Let's start with The Ordinary's Natural Moisturizing Factors plus Phytoceramides. Quite a price jump from our last product. Well, is it really? I can't believe how expensive The Ordinary is these days. They used to be, you know, your, your five to seven dollar brand. This is what, 23 now? It's big though. It's a big moisturizer, 3.4 fluid ounces. And this cream does feel like it was made with dry skin types in mind. It's definitely more of a heavy moisturizer, not quite the heaviest I've ever encountered, but definitely you're going to like this one much more if you have dry skin and you might hate it if you have oily skin. But I like the formula, you know, The Ordinary is always fragrance free and they always do what they claim on the packaging, natural moisturizing factors. It's meant to mimic the natural moisturizing factors in your skin so that you get excellent moisturizing and hydrating properties. And when I first tried this, I was really wowed because The Ordinary never quite had a moisturizer for me before this. I still feel like I do like it, but but <laughs> as somebody who's really gotten into K-beauty and especially as somebody who is currently trying the brand Toradin, if you happen to see me try Toradin's ceramide products, it's, it's so hard for me to sit here and have the same level of enthusiasm that I would have had about this before I tried that. It's nice. It's a big bottle. It's really not too bad in terms of price per ounce but I do like Toradins more, and you can catch some really amazing deals on K-Beauty. You all know, you can get amazing deals on K-Beauty. So it's kind of interesting. I feel like a lot of us were really into the ordinary skincare, and K-Beauty has taken a lot of the ordinary's audience. <laughs> Next up, I wanna give you all an update of this right here, the Peach Slices Redness Relief Color Correcting Moisturizer. I've had this for a while. I have reached for it a few times, and overall, I'd say it does work for me. You know, the claim is, it, it, it relieves redness. If you have redness on your face, the green pigment in here will help to color correct redness. Green cancels out red. But from the very first time we tried this, we did read some reviews of people saying that this was more like a foundation. And in fact, I'm now gonna say it is. It's using that technology, you may have seen in some other products where it, it starts out white or green in this case, and as you rub the product, the pigment starts to reveal itself. I assume it's, it's encapsulated pigments in some form. Let me know if you know more about this than I do. But regardless, you do get a beige color in the end. So in some ways it's interesting in that you're getting some amount of green to correct the redness, 
But in the end, if it is a tinted moisturizer, aren't you really just getting a tinted moisturizer except one in one shade? And I do feel like that's the catch. That's always the catch with any universal tint, as many of you know, is that it's not really universal. It's not. And so this works on me, but is it going to work on everyone? I have my doubts. I, I certainly have my doubts about that. But the main thing is I'm just not really reaching for it that much. You know, there's a whole bunch of new skin tints that have released, but they also have a shade range so you can choose the shade that works for you. And, and that's the catch. It's $20, but it's one shade. Is it going to work for you? It feels like a coin toss. I have one more skincare product and I can't believe it's a chemical exfoliant. Yes. It is actually a chemical exfoliant from the brand PSA Skin. It is their Goals Serum. <laughs> is it just me or do entirely too many skincare companies have really close names? I, I know someone asked me about, I think it was PCA Skin, and I replied saying, oh yeah, I've tried Paula's Choice. <laughs> and now we're talking about PSA Skin, which is the sister brand of Allies of Skin. And we have a lot of claims on this product. It says it has 12% glycolic, lactic, pyruvic, BHA, and PHA. Probiotics, niacinamide, tamanu oil. I don't notice an asterisk with probiotics, so uh, as a heads up, might want to make sure to include not living cultures in this. Just noting what happened to Tula. It's a PSA for PSA. Uh, it includes some licorice, some green tea. I, overall, a great ingredients list. But again, I do have to be careful with this kind of product. What works for me is to take a long break from all exfoliating products, use this one night, and then take a long break again. For me, it is best to use a strong exfoliant once every week, maybe once every two weeks. Uh, again, I've been happy with this. It's going well. I really appreciate that we actually get an expiration date on this product. So often, American products neglect to include an expiration date. And I think it's pretty important when we're talking about exfoliants. You want them to work, right? So I appreciate that. Overall, I do like it. It's still kind of expensive, though. I do think you have you know, plenty of more affordable options, but if you don't mind the price point, it's a good product. And let's go ahead and talk about a fragrance next. This was gifted to me by Henry Rose, which is a brand that I've actually talked about. I don't think I named that video well, so a lot of people missed it, but that's a video in which I talk all about what this brand is doing and why I actually think it is a very innovative fragrance brand. They've done it again with their body sprays. This is a body spray that does not contain alcohol. Do you know how hard that is to find? <laughs> Almost every fragrance in existence is primarily alcohol, very much including body sprays. But no, this is actually alcohol free. Now, as such, there are a few quirks with this. You do have to shake it up before you spray it. And as you might expect, I don't think this has the longevity of body sprays that do contain alcohol. However, I think it's so nice that it is considerate of the fact that some people don't want alcohol in their products. And that's something that Henry Rose really nails every time with their products. Now, I've been testing this out for a while, and what I have found is in this great question of where to spray your body sprays on your clothes or on your skin, I prefer this one on my skin over an oil. That seems to be the best way to get the most longevity from this, for me at least. I don't know if this is an, an individual thing. It might also depend on the product you're using. I know they do have some uh, body creams. It might pair well with that, but I do love this smell. It is strong in citrus, and I love citrus. Again, my, my problem with citrus scents is they seem to not last very long. And this applies even with the EDPs of orange scents. It just seems to be that those fragrance molecules, they, they don't seem to linger. This says it has three different types of orange in it. Top notes, Italian blood orange, middle notes, Valencia orange flower, Tunisia orange flower, absolute, and bottom notes, amber tonic. I don't know what amber tonic is. I assume it's like some kind of an amber. Anyway, again, I don't always trust my nose, so you know I've had Aura smelling this as well, and even she said it smells amazing. You get a really strong burst of that citrus when you first spray this, 
but it does kind of die down a bit. So you might want to try to figure out what you can do to extend its longevity. But overall, again, I really like that they are continuing to make more fragrances for people that have sensitivities, are unable to use alcohol in products, struggle with essential oils. Really interesting brand, definitely check out my video if you want to know more about them. By, by the way, I haven't even said it yet, that's Michelle Pfeiffer's brand. I do have a few makeup products I want to share in today's video of note. I have seen a lot of people talking about this. This is the new Givenchy Prismi Libra Blush. I shouldn't say it's new because it's been out for a while in, I think, Europe, but it just came to the US. It's now available on Sephora, and I've noticed a lot of people are very curious about this. I received this through Influencer, shockingly. In the shade Mousseline Lilas, which is the lightest shade, I'm wearing it again today. This is in the same format as the powder, it is obviously smaller. You get four different colors in here, and you get a puff. And they say that you can apply it with the puff. Perhaps you uh, end up getting the Givenchy logo and you can just stamp that onto your face. That's not very stealth wealth though. And I don't know how many of you default to applying your blush with a, a tiny little poof, but it's not easy. It's not a very intuitive system. So Givenchy does have a backup system. They say that you can pour it into the lid. I'll go ahead and put this up on the screen so you can see. Pour it into the lid and pick it up with your brush. It's a little messy. It's a little messy, but it is really pretty. And I feel like the reason these look so natural on your skin is the same reason the powder looks natural. You know, our skin, it's easy to look at it and think it is all one solid color, but really your skin is comprised of quite a few different colors. I talked a long time ago about using an app, yes, actually using an app, I know, to uh, pull out the colors in my skin and I was pulling out <laughs> I felt so insulted by this app. I was getting grays and I was getting spring green. <laughs> the Clinique lady told me I have witch undertones. But yeah, the principle here is the more you're adding more colors and more dimension into your face, the more your face looks real and human. But I don't love the loose powder system. I was thinking about how there seems to be something that is very out of trend right now. Anyone remember this blush that I'm holding up? It's quite old, oh, it's quite old. We don't even get these little boxes anymore. But Benefit and many others used to have these blushes that were comprised of several different colors in a pressed blush. What if we just bring this back? It'd be a whole lot less messy. You still get the same effect. What, can we, is it time for the trend cycle to go back to this? What's everyone's stance on how long powder products last? Mine is until they smell bad. <laughs> Do not quote me on that, absolutely do not, do not. Ask your doctor, probably, I don't know, covering my butt, definitely. But uh, yeah, I think powders, I think they can last a long time. There's no water in them. Three mascaras, three to end out this video, but I feel like this is the best way to talk about mascaras. I feel like mascaras are so subjective, everyone has a different experience with them, it's best to do them all side by side. So I bought the Tower 28 mascara as well as the Give mascara, and this was sent to me in PR, the What's Up Beauty Watch Me mascara. I'm gonna talk about all three of them, but I think the best place to start is the most talked about, the Tower 28 Make Waves mascara. In terms of Sephora mascaras, this one is on the more affordable side. It is $20 for 0.29 ounces. So many people have been calling this their holy grail mascara, and I, I, I like it, I like all three of these because none of these smudge or flake on me and that's the ultimate test. Granted, I do wear powder around my eyes most of the time. I think most mascaras, aside from tubing mascaras, do not get along with just skincare. Powder is the trick. But this one, I have to admit, when I first tried it, I was a little underwhelmed. I wasn't sure why people were madly in love with this. I'm going to say it's one of those where you might not like it the first time you try it, but about a week in, I did like this. In fact, it was at its best for me between about, I guess, weeks one and four. Weeks two and four, we'll say. That was where it really shined. It was a wonderful formula for lengthening. It's not the most volumizing by far, but great for lengthening. I wasn't experiencing any clumping. 
But the problem is, at about a month of usage, this brush, this plastic bristle brush, it kind of gets clogged. <laughs> so that every time you go to open the mascara, it's just kind of full of mascara all over it, and it goes on clumpy. So after one month, I haven't actually loved this as much. I found it a little harder to work with. Not impossible. You can definitely go in with a clean mascara spoolie or wand and clean things up a bit, but it's a lot less easy to use after a month than it is from weeks two to four. But the Give Mascara, the Give Mascara, I have to say, personally, I preferred this. But this is all going to make sense. You know, I, I'm not somebody who was <laughs> the, the world's biggest Gwen Stefani fan. I definitely have not bought a ton from her makeup line, but this got me largely because of the brush. I'll have a better picture up of it. I thought this looked like the most genius brush design. This one started off wet though. It was definitely wet. It definitely did smudge in the first week for me, but I have to say between weeks two and 12 with this one, I was very, very pleased with it. I'm actually not sure why I don't see more people talking about this because that's pretty impressive. Is that not what we want in mascara? I don't think most people, I don't think, are moving on from a mascara after one month. Are, are people? Am I out of touch? But then along came What's Up Beauty. I have definitely raved about What's Up Beauty before. I am absolutely in love with their brushes. I talked about them in my favorite makeup products. By the way, their palettes are also Incredible. They are some of the best palettes in my collection. The thing I like about them is that it feels like they put a lot of thought into every product they release. They do not release a lot of products, but when they do, they don't disappoint. And I really appreciate that. You, you know, if you've watched this channel, I have gone off about being irritated by companies where it feels like, did you test your product? What, what, what happened here? And that's once again the impression I'm getting with their mascara. This is a little more expensive. It's $23, but I have to say it already is winning points just for being in gorgeous packaging. We appreciate when our mascara doesn't roll away and it's heavy, it's weighted, it feels much more luxe in comparison to the other packaging options. As for this mascara, from day one, it felt like such a different mascara. I hope I can explain this well, but to, to give you my best effort, the Give Mascara, I just said this one felt wet. We've all probably experienced a wet formula, a dry formula. This is somehow neither. It's almost, it's almost creamy, but I don't think that's the right word. It feels more like a melted down coal pencil. I feel like somebody in the comments is gonna know exactly the right word for that. Please comment away. Whatever it is, it makes it so that this formula is so buildable. It is so buildable and the brush design makes it possible. Because on one side you have your standard spoolie, just your standard bristle brush that everyone is familiar with. You use that to build up the product and then you flip the brush around and you use the row of plastic bristles to separate. And it's like it takes that cool feeling throughout every lash so you actually get volume, length, separation through the bristles. It's everything you could want in one mascara. <laughs> anyway, it's the mascara that I'm wearing today. I am, I'm blown away by it. The only catch is I haven't had this long enough to tell you if it's gonna be a 12 week mascara or if it's going to change. I just don't know at this point, I will follow up. Anyway, they're an amazing indie brand. I'm not surprised they came out with an amazing mascara, but again, I will, I will update you all on how that continues to go. And my friends, that brings us to the end of today's video. As always, let me know your thoughts. Again, I am working on the K-Beauty version of this video. Hope to have that up next week. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you all next time.